go. Well, okay. Can I have your attention, please? We previously <coughs> convened the meeting at 6.30 p.m. in executive session. We're now resuming in public session. Our first order of business tonight is to ask if there's any public input on any subject. If there is, you raise your hand, you'll be recognized. Uh, anything? No? Okay. Uh, next on the agenda, we have a student report from Emma Hoey. Uh, Emma is a member of the class of 2016, so I'm going to turn the floor over to you. Good evening, everyone. I'm yeah. going to start with sports. So the right. girls' softball won 3-2 to two on Saturday against Central Catholic. And on Thursday the 16th versus Newburyport, they won 7-4. to four. And they also beat Masco Wednesday, 13-0. They had a game today versus Georgetown, but I didn't get the results. Track on April 15th won against Pentucket and Triton. And they have a home meet this Wednesday against Amesbury and Linfield. Baseball had three games over vacation. They won one against Georgetown, but they lost against Ipswich and Man Essex, but they have a 4-4 record right now. Tennis won Thursday, April 17th against Newburyport, and then the girls' tennis won Wednesday, April 15th against Newburyport, 5-0. Boys lacrosse recently beat Georgetown 11-3, and girls lacrosse lost to Ipswich, sadly, on Monday, April 13th. And fourth quarter began on April 10th, and all the students are really looking forward to this because the seniors are, you know, rounding up, getting ready to end their school year in a month. You mean the sliding? Oh, no, rounding up. <laughs> Senior slide. <laughs> the AP exams begin on Monday. It starts with AP chemistry. They go through the middle of May. Seniors commit to colleges by this Friday, and the seniors' last day is May 29th. NHS induction is May 14th in the auditorium for all new members in junior and senior class. The Germany trip, as I told you guys, uh, was Thursday, April 16th to Saturday, April 25th. It was a huge success. Everyone who went loved it. Best experience of my life. I couldn't wait. Um, on May 15th, the SAD organization is going to the middle school for an informative presentation on healthy relationships for middle school and high school integration. The NEMAS conference is tomorrow in the distance learning lab. The sophomore, Dan Madden, is running for representative of Stuco VP Regional. And the Stuco Walk for Hunger is on Sunday in Boston. So for my student work, I brought an AP English project we did. We had a model, um, like an AP rubric, and you had to create sources and get all the fonts and everything so that we could get a feel for what the AP exam is going to be like. She had a rubric that was like the school ride rubric and it had all that but I couldn't get it back because it was in my folder and she wasn't here but um it was really cool getting to like see like what the AP exam is going to be like so I feel like I'm very prepared for that now Emma you're going to have to tell us just a little bit about the trip uh, yeah go ahead <laughs> we went to Germany Austria Liechtenstein and Switzerland and Czech Republic my favorite city was Prague we spent about two nights in each city we had um Breakfast was always included. We got to go on our own for free time and lunch. We tried so many different foods, lots of museums, lots of historical sites. I think like the best experience was definitely the cultural integration, like seeing the way that like everything else came together in like new countries and like even like getting to know like other people there. There was a lot of other EF tours and like we got to meet German people and Swiss people and like hear like what they get to do. So it was really great. How many students went from North Red? I believe it was like 43. Really? That's yeah. A, that's a good size group. Yeah. So when you were in Prague, did you have the traditional Czech meal of the beef with the candle sauce? Do you know if you had yeah, that? Yeah, we did. And they had like the little white bread on the side. The dumplings. Yeah. 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 It, it's interesting. They puree all of the vegetables. I was, I happened to be over there too, but not with the school group. I was on vacation and I just missed them by three hours. They left Prague three hours before. Well, they must have known you were coming. <laughs> I was coming. But that, I thought that was pretty good, that meal, because they, yeah, they puree it. all the vegetables into the gravy. Yeah. And I don't like vegetables, so it's a way to so get the, Mel to eat his vegetables. It was good. I was just telling them, when Cliff and I were in high school, we used to go to Benson's Wild Animal Farm <laughs> up oh, in Nashville. Yeah. Remember yeah. Benson? Yeah. That's where we used to go that for was a trip, trip. So yeah. things are evolving. And I want to congratulate. I, I saw a story on you and your skating exploits. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Now, are, you, is there any, are there any more competitions now? after that or are you done for now there's no more high school competitions this year there was a national competition in ohio but i qualified but i didn't get to go yeah but um there's no more high school ones but there's other ones for like private clubs that and will you do a high school next year yeah no? definitely yeah good excellent emma any questions any thank further you. questions for emma comments thank you very much 
Thank you. As you know, you can leave. You don't have to stay for the meeting. You haven't done anything wrong, so there's later. no reason for us to punish you, okay? <laughs> All right. Um, next on the agenda, I'm going to skip a little bit here, and we're going to move forward to Mr. Bernard's uh, recommendation for Director of Pupil Personnel Services. We've been trying to fill this position since I first got on the school committee 15 and a half years ago. Uh, we've done a worldwide search, and I think we finally have a, a result. Worldwide search, and we found a candidate right next door in Drake. <laughs> So, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, I'm very pleased to, uh, to introduce to you Cynthia Conant, um, who is my recommendation to you to fill the position of Director of Pupil Personnel Services. And as, as you noted, Mr. Venezia, we, um, we have gone through previously two unsuccessful searches, um, had the good fortune of having Dr. Valerie Flynn in as an interim PPS director. But I must tell you that I am uh, very excited to, uh, to introduce uh, Ms. Conant to you. I'd like to just take a moment to, um, to introduce her formally to you uh, by way of her background. Um, Cynthia is currently in her third year as an assistant director of special education in the Fitchburg Public School District. Her prior experience includes time as a program coordinator in a 45-day diagnostic program and as a guidance counselor for the Ashland Public Schools. Cynthia also has experience working as a case coordinator for the Family Stabilization Program, which is a residential program, and she was a clinician at the Dr. Franklin Perkins School and a social worker there as well, and for the Department of Social Services. She attended St. Michael's College and has earned a Master of Education degree from Cambridge College. Dr. Daly and I um, did, I think, a very, uh, a very good and thorough job of um, conducting a site visit uh, that, that uh, Cynthia hosted for us in Fitchburg. We met a number of people that, um, that she has had the, the, the good fortune of interacting with, from parents to co-workers to her superiors. Um, we did a thorough reference check. Um, the original search committee, which consisted of 13 members uh, that was facilitated by Dr. Daly and, and Mr. Bowers was, uh, was a school committee representative, also our Special Education Parent Advisory Council President, Mr. McManus, who's here today, too. Um, and I think, we've, um, I think we have found somebody that will be a very good match for our district, and I'm, I'm pleased to recommend her to you. Thank you, Mr. Bernard. In all seriousness, um, you know, Mr. Bernard and, and, and Ms. Willis, prior to Mr. Bernard as superintendent, uh, they don't take lightly when they're doing these searches for the business manager, for the director of pupil personnel services. If they don't find the person that they want and they're comfortable with, they'll continue to look, they'll continue to search. So this is great news. Um, any questions um, for uh, Ms. Conant? I just said welcome first. Thank you. Thank you for Congratulations. having me. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I, I noticed in a couple uh, points of your career you stepped I think we might have started in outside of education, then came into education, then you stepped briefly out. Again, were there specific reasons why you got out of education and seemed to go more into family counseling or? So I was actually, like when I was doing the family counseling, I was actually also <clears throat> still working as a guidance counselor. Okay. So it was the second job okay. at the time for me. Okay. So I never officially stepped out. It was um, also just a second job that I had taken on at the time. One other question. I I had was um, we discussed briefly or more than briefly putting uh, adding a program this year at the middle school for uh, behavioral social and emotional issues mm -hmm. and, I, and I, I believe that has gone by the boys this year because the we budget and, and fund you it. you have um, found other ways to handle those issues for next year I'm just curious as to your um, your thoughts on those kind of programs because to me that middle school area is a good place to try to start that's the age I think you try to start to catch some of those problems on the social, emotional, and behavioral sure. um, side. Sure, absolutely. I mean, I think, <clears throat> I think you're right in the sense that some of those issues do kind of come to the surface at that time. And I think the more that we can support our students in district, I think the better we are because we can keep them connected to their home communities. Um, I have a lot of experience in terms of designing programming, specifically for that population. I have a really good understanding of the resources that the district needs to allocate to make those programs successful. And I think what I do a really good job at is um, implementing infrastructures that support the work of the people who are working in those programs. So I think um, that's something that I have an extensive skill set in. That's great to hear because I think that, that um, we're, we're dealing with the issues now, but I think that that's one area in probably mo uh, many school districts can mm. um, afford to put more effort into. And uh, so I'm glad Thanks. to hear that experience. Thank you. Yeah. Janine. I'm quiet. Okay. <laughs> Cliff? Well, having sat on the original yes. uh, committee, 
um, I give my seal of approval. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, it's, it's, it's a relief to see you come on board. You have a great resume and a great recommendation from the superintendent. Um, and we're looking forward to working with you. I think you'll find us a very collaborative and easy to work with school Jerry, committee. I do have so. a question. Yes, I, I think it's more kind of towards the board maybe than you per se. Sure. Um, will you, will she work with um, Dr. Valerie Flynn to become acclimated into what she has already started and worked with? I, I would say that one of, the, one of the goals we had with starting this process early um, was to hopefully um, find someone that we, we thought would be a good match for our district uh, before they were scooped up by another district and also to allow for ample transition time um, on both ends. And if we found someone that was currently employed in a district, we wanted to give that district an opportunity to achieve a smooth transition for the person that we were, that we were taking and also to, um, to allow that person to work with Dr. Flynn. Um, and I think, we've, I think we can accomplish that in the time that we have before, before she departs on, on June 30th. What's the official start date for? Uh, July 1. July 1, okay. Mm -hmm. right. So again, um, this is subject to a vote by the school committee. And uh, I think the, the motion should be to appoint um, Cynthia Conan as Director of Pupil Personnel Services, contingent upon negotiating a contract with the superintendent. So moved. That's good. Okay, motion by Mr. Bowers. Second. Second by Ms. Imbriano. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, none. Motion carries by a vote of four to nothing. Congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm honored. I really am, and okay. I'm so excited. That's Thank great. Looking forward to having you here. How do you get here from Drakeit? <laughs> I just came 93. Just down 93. Down 93. Right. She's going to be going the opposite direction, too. She won't yeah. have that big of a problem yeah. with traffic because yeah. we're north in the morning and south in the afternoon. Yeah. That's okay. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have to stay for the rest of the meeting. Mr. Chair, be um, yes. I, I had mentioned this earlier. I, if I could have a minute, I wanted to. Uh, I normally would ignore letters to the editor. You don't ignore anything in the newspaper. Ahead. But <laughs> there was a letter two weeks ago that I thought just had. Uh, I think it was irresponsible. Um, it, it charged that a school committee and the selectmen are committing illegal acts knowingly, um, and we've ill served the electorate and citizens of North Reading. And it's in. Res it was. Uh, Responding to our, the administrator stipends, which we've discussed numerous times here, um, the, the charge is also made that we're whitewashing these uh, stipends by hiding the contracts. I just want to make it clear. If anybody wants to see a contract for any of our employee groups or any of our administrators, they're all public. You call the school department. If you want to see a copy of the contract, they're all public. So there's no whitewash. And what we're doing isn't illegal. All of these stipends and, and they're not specifically in the contract. The opportunity to get these stipends is in every one of our administrators' contracts, and it's subject to the superintendent's decision during the year and at the end of the year. And he then runs <coughs> them by the school committee. And I just want to make it clear there's nothing illegal. There's no whitewashing. We give stipends when we think they're deserved. And as Mr. Venezzi point, has pointed out in the past, many of these stipends that we're handing out to uh, administrators in the past two to three years revolve around the building project and people who are spending exorbitant amounts of time, administrators, on that building project. So I just wanted to answer that, and I'll be done with it. Yeah, and you know, I, I, I hate to belabor this too, but I agree with Mel that we need to respond to it because of the accusations that were made in the paper. Quite frankly, even if it weren't part of their contracts, we would have the right and right. the ability to negotiate with them to, uh, to award these stipends. Um, the other thing I want to point out is that uh, we're completely transparent with this. This the, Coming into a school committee meeting uh, and putting on the agenda the awarding of stipends to our administrators, it's not required. It's a budgetary issue. It's, we have the authority to do it. Um, and it's not something that we necessarily even have to bring public. I don't think um, that every board in town makes public uh, all of the you know, intricacies of every contract right. that require a stipend for something. The stipend's all over the, the contracts for most of the, uh, uh, most of the departments. So again, um, I'm not sure what prompted Mr. Candy's letter this time. We've responded to him on several occasions. Uh, hopefully we can put this to rest and, uh, because I'm getting tired of talking about it. Janine? I just wanted to add that it's not m money that we take from one area to put in another. It's right. something that is built in budget. to the budget itself. Correct. And I might add, as I've added before, the stipends that we gave out this year were well-deserved. Well, well, well-deserved, okay? All right, next on the agenda, we have the approval of the FY 2016 budget. This has been a 
topic of discussion now for a number of months, uh, meeting with the uh, finance planning team. Last week, we actually met with the uh, finance committee and presented our budget to them. I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Bernardi and uh, Mr. Conley to just do a brief presentation on where we stand right now with our FY16 budget. Tonight, we are going to vote on that budget and uh, so that we can uh, um, mm -hmm. place it on the town warrant for town meeting on June 1st. Thank you, Mr. Venezia. So in your packet, uh, members, you should have a, a memo from, uh, from Mr. Connolly to both you and to me um, with, a, with a detailed explanation of the background around uh, the number that we are recommending to you as our um, final figure for, for you to adopt for the fiscal year 2016 budget. And, and attached to that memo is a breakdown of the modified level services budget recommendation that I'm going to ask Michael to walk you through at this time. Thank you. So um, as Mr. Chairman uh, just uh, alluded to, we are scheduled to make our annual school budget vote <clears throat> so a budget can be prepared in time for the town meeting warrant. Uh, we have certainly spent a great deal of time uh, over the last several months dating back to certainly October and November as, a, as an administrative team and the last weeks publicly discussing the FY16 school budget and the school needs and priorities. Uh, the revised budget summary and memo that was in your packet this evening uh, does illustrate the administration's recommended budget proposal at this at this time. Uh, as you recall, we have certainly discussed uh, the possibility of moving forward with voting a budget that would meet the guidelines of the finance planning team. At this time, that would be a recommendation of voting a budget amount of $27 million, $662, which represents an increase of $714,647, or what would be a 2.7% increase over the current fiscal year 2015 appropriation. This budget amount would meet the current guidelines of the finance planning team. As we discussed at the public hearing and again at the April 13th school committee meeting, there continued, there remains an unidentified reduction amount that would certainly need to be identified uh, prior to the June 1st town meeting. Uh, but we, we certainly have discussed that we feel we have certainly have time to do that and we are remain hopeful that additional savings or revenue can be identified to assist with closing the remaining unidentified reduction amount. So in the summary page uh, that is highlighted that now reflects what would be a recommended uh, balanced budget uh, bottom line amount does break down the, the major budget drivers that we've been discussing throughout this process uh, as well as the highlights in, in major changes in terms of salaries and expenses. Um, some of the changes that, we, that I will uh, highlight that um, reflected in this summary from prior summaries uh, or what was in your preliminary budget proposal is uh, does reference uh, some of the reductions that we did discuss at the public hearing based from our preliminary proposal that was reductions that did total two hundred and two thousand and thirty five dollars and essentially uh, was making reductions that eliminated some uh, personnel uh, new positions, uh, one of which was a central office receptionist position, um, a reduction, a reduction to uh, the town and school shared facility position. That was a new uh, position uh, that we were going to share, a point two FTE with the, the town, um, making a reduction to a custodial position, um, and then eliminating a proposal of a new inclusion paraprofessional position, uh, reducing what was a 0.4 FTE physical education restoration amount to the a 0.2 restoration that's reflected uh, in the enrollment driven adjustments um, amount in your summary, um, as well as reducing what was an attempt to restore small capital and equipment and line items of $20,000. Um, so all in told, the, those identified reductions that were discussed at the public hearing would total an amount of $202,035. Uh, there would remain an amount of $205,529 that would be, need to be identified. Uh, but I will note that in total from our preliminary proposal, the total amount of reductions to bring the budget to the $27,478,662 amount uh, that we just spoke of is 407,564 lower than what was in our preliminary budget proposal. 
Um, so at, really at this time, I'm happy to open it up to additional comments and, and, and questions. We have, um, I think the administration does feel, uh, you know, certainly that the budget recommendation that's before us tonight would represent an educationally sound budget and would allow the district to move forward and meet some of its key educational objectives, although not all of the objectives that we laid out early on in this process. I mean, we adopted the school committee goals in October. Um, you know, we feel certainly first and foremost, it does accomplish um, the need to address the high school enrollment in high class sizes and course offerings. Um, it does work to enhance technology integration to the classroom, and it does attempt to achieve the student service services objectives in our educational plan to address that social and emotional needs um, of, uh, of that population of students. Um, so at that point, I'll, I'll open up to additional comments and questions. There is a recommended budget motion that I uh, did uh, in the memo that would, uh, is included in the packet as well. All right, Michael, thank you. So just, just to clarify, based on discussions that we've had and meetings we've had with the financial planning team, which is members of the Board of Selectmen, uh, Chairman and Vice Chair, members of the Finance Committee, Chair and Vice Chair, this town administrator, the town finance director, our own superintendent, uh, and, and Mr. Conley, uh, the available revenues that have been allocated for the school budget are $27,478,662. What Michael just said, and to frame it in a little bit of a different way, we have initiatives that exceed that by $407,564. Okay. So we have some things that, uh, and Michael mentioned some of the things that we, were, we might have to reduce in order to get to that $27,478,000 number. Uh, there's several ways for us to approach this. I mean, we can make the cuts to get down to the 27,478. We can um, vote on a budget that exceeds the 27,478, and that budget would then go to the to the town warrant for town meeting. We'd have to deal that with that either now between now and town meeting or at town meeting. And the third way is to incorporate some number up to $407,000 into the $27,478,000 as an unassigned reduction, which means that somehow between now and town meeting, we would have to either find additional revenues or make additional cuts to get to the so-called balanced budget number. So I'm just gonna throw that out for discussion to the committee. I, I won't vote for a budget that has any specific cuts. Uh, the only way I'll vote for this budget is if the entire 407,564 is unassigned cuts. I've reviewed this again. I'm uncomfortable with the custodial position. We had to add a position this year, and I don't understand how we can cut one. I'm not in favor of the physical education cut. I'm not in favor of the uh, leaving out the new para inclusion paraprofessional that we had added. Um, I'm also extremely concerned with the fact that we're expecting to have uh, a pretty large amount of savings in special education this year. Um, those costs often catch us off guard. Um, Mr. Conley did mention we've addressed the high school enrollment. We didn't even come close to going far enough to address the high school enrollment. And that deals with class size. Correct, right? class size. Um, so I'm extremely uncomfortable with these cuts. I'm extremely uncomfortable that I have to vote for this budget. Um, but in order to put a balanced budget on the warrant, I will do that, but I won't support any specific cuts. The only way I'll support it is if the motion states that the $407,564 are unassigned cuts that we will find over the next um, six weeks if we don't receive any more um, revenues. Okay, Janine? He says it very elegantly, okay. so, but and I, I totally agree with what Mel said. I think that any of the cuts that we have to choose are not good, but um, it's a balanced budget that we need, do need to vote on. Cliff? Yeah, basically, we just don't have enough money in the in the town's budget in the in the revenue stream to be able to cover all of the things that need to be covered in town. That's the basics of it. And uh, I agree with, with Mel's view that there's, you know, there, are, there are cuts in here that um, to get to this number that are basically, they're not acceptable, but we don't have a choice. I mean, if you go to the store and you got $10 and you see something you want, it's $20, you can't buy it. That's all there is to it. Right. And to make it clear, I mean, I know we have to, I guess we don't have to come in with a balanced budget. We do not. We have an option of uh, voting for a budget that exceeds the available revenue. But I think that's the right thing to do is come in with a balanced budget. 
Um, I do praise the finance planning team, selectmen, finance committee for um, you know, finding additional funds for us. But you know, honestly, 2.7% doesn't even cover the increase in our annual salaries. That's true. When you take into account steps and, and uh, cola, cola. So, yeah, so and I know we're going to hear, well, that's because the, the way you have the contracts and you got to get rid of these steps. No, that's if you want to change the system, especially with the teachers, then start teachers at sixty thousand dollars a year, sixty-five thousand dollars a year, and just give them a cost of living. When you start teachers at forty-five thousand dollars, they have to get step raises. That's why step raises exist because we start teachers artificially low, and so the only way to change that system is to start come in and start everybody at at least sixty thousand, if not more, and that's not going to happen. So the steps are going to continue. So I just have a concern. Um, I know people are saying, "Gee, the enrollment's going down," yet we we have we've seen how many classes at the high school we have that are thirty and more. And those are core classes, some of them, AP courses with 30 students in them. Uh, and, and we're going to address that, you know, somewhat, but we're still going to have some issues next year. So, um, and the enrollment hasn't gone down enough in the elementary schools. When you have three elementary schools, five, six K through five in each school, and if you lose 15 students per school, that's like two per grade. It's not enough to, to allow us to reduce teachers. At the, at the elementary level. So that everybody understands now, what Mr. Webbs has proposed is that we uh, vote to uh, vote for a balanced budget of 27,478,662. The motion to approve that budget would include uh, a specific a specification that that we had a $407,564 uh, unassigned reduction involved in it, which means that between now and town meeting, we have to either find additional revenues, make additional cuts or at town meeting get up and make a motion to exceed the budget number that we've put on the warrant. Which okay? I, I wouldn't do. Okay. So I, so I do have one question though. Yep. Do we have to approve? So this gives us five more weeks to go through every item in the budget. Do we have to approve those or can the administration just decide where those cuts are to be made? Well, I think, no, I think there's gonna be a discussion between the administration and the school committee okay, as to where to those cuts would be. Okay. Um, Right. And again, just so people know, we are, the finance planning team is going to meet at least twice more before town meeting. We're meeting this Thursday morning, and I'm sure we're going to be meeting one it's more time. May 19th, meeting. perhaps? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there are two meetings. <clears throat> Cliff, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, there, there's, uh, there's a potential for additional funding. Right. And I would expect that there is additional funding, the additional revenue that comes to the town through state funding uh, sources, uh, that those would come. Uh, to, to help us with this budget, for for one thing, the uh, the, the um, uh, I think the House Ways and Means budget included an extra five dollars for a student, student right. and about, about another nineteen nineteen thousand something, uh, almost twenty thousand uh, dollars. If, if that's not in the revenue stream as it is now, that's obviously not anywhere near enough, but. Uh, and it's five percent of the way. Okay. So, you know, those things may happen, and if those happen, I'm, I would expect that uh, we would get support through that through the, the system to increase our funding. Okay. At this time, I'll open up to members of the audience if they want to make any comments or ask any questions. I'd be glad to answer. Julie. It sounds like Mel is not willing to go in with the unbalanced budget. How are other people? Uh, I'm not willing either. I mean. At, at this point in time, and you, you read my mind, because I want to make it clear that we are voting for a balanced budget. When I s talked about town meeting, I'm saying options that are available, and I'm glad I get a chance to clarify that, because I don't want people calling up and saying, oh, you're going to town meeting with us. We are voting for, if we go with Mel's motion, we are voting on a balanced budget, and that would be our intention moving forward to go with a balanced budget, so. Just to, okay. the, only, the only way I would have, if we had, um, Three months ago, said, "Look, we're, we look like we're going to have to have an we don't have enough funding from revenues from the town. We're going to have to go for an override." If we had been talking about that, and I don't know if I would have uh, proved, I, I would have supported an override. I would support going for an unbalanced budget. But since we haven't talked about an override, um, I, I just I just won't support it at this time. John? I mean, just to, if I could a comment, I, the committee I know is well aware, but for the benefit of the public too, the, the, the cuts that we've identified and that Michael has outlined and you've been discussing the last few moments, it, it has been an agonizing process for a number of months. We have 
we have worked um, tirelessly to really minimize any impact on the classroom. We've, we've, as an administrative team, we've worked very hard to preserve um, reasonable class sizes. I believe the number before you for our recommend, recommended budget is, is a responsible number, but it has been a, a, it has been a struggle. We have spent, you know, countless hours together as a team. Um, Michael and I have spent uh, additional hours together. You all have have, have uh, met with us through workshops at these meetings. It has it has been a tedious task. But with all of that said, um, I'm appreciative of the cooperative spirit that this town has to try to make it work with the funds available. So I, I, I fully respect where you where you stand tonight to to not want to identify the cuts. Uh, we didn't want to identify any cuts either. But these are the I guess I would label them the, the least distasteful of a list of distasteful cuts, and, and it's unfortunate that we're there, but that's, that's where we are. But we will continue to roll up our sleeves and to think creatively to try to, um, to, try to make it work, and I'm confident that we will, but um, I, I think the actions that I'm hearing you talk about are probably the appropriate ones. Well, I, I mean, I, just, I want to echo John's sentiments about the work that's put in, and I'm not criticizing the cuts you're recommending. I'm just saying we'll vote for the balanced budget and this gives us another three or four weeks. I understand. To, you know, mm -hmm. maybe we go through one more time, we say, hey, wait a minute, maybe we can do this yep. and that. So I don't think it hurts to have another extra three weeks to find areas. I don't either, and, areas. I, and I think Mr. Venezia is coming, you know, there, there are two finance plan te planning team right. meetings before then, and, and I think that gives us an opportunity to maybe you know, hear some other voices and, and, and to think things through, maybe to get to a number that we're all a little bit more uh, pleased with. Masi? That's a possibility, Masi. I, I think 205 that was, is mm -hmm. a subset of those other things you listed. So what's your schedule? On it? We're going to have at least, we're going to have at least two more school committee meetings, one on May 5th. I'm sorry, May, May, 20th, May 11th. May, uh, May 11th. May 11th. May 11th. May 11th. May 11th and May 27th. So we have two more school committee meetings. So obviously we put on the agenda if there's budget discussions, which yes. I think we should probably keep on as a yeah, running item. Yeah. Okay. If there's budget discussions, we'll have it on the agenda. Yeah. And, and again, I, I don't know if there were any, uh, there was a secondary list of cuts. And Not there were actually, priority. Th right, but there were actually some things on there that I personally felt I might move up ahead of some of the other cuts. So, so that's where I would be interested to know if you need to make cuts to come in with the balance budget ultimately. Yeah, we'll discuss that. Chance to perhaps hear and maybe give feedback on what And I'm guessing that could be the case too, that that, that may happen. <laughs> um, any further discussion regarding the budget? Okay, Mel, I'm gonna, oh, yes sir. Okay. That's all right. <laughs> oh, my condolences for that. <laughs> it's a good thing you get out of there because you'd be there till probably midnight if, if you hadn't left. So. Um, so we are in town and our and this is our first experience with the school system. And we've got a child going into kindergarten this year and we're waiting for him to come here. Hmm. For full-time kindergarten. For full-time kindergarten. So I'm curious, the budget itself, is it addressed? Um, I thought we had. I'm going to turn this over to either John or. Uh, or Michael. I, yeah, I think between the two. So I can, I can tell you that we've had a number of discussions um, at these at school committee meetings, and I've had some conversations with parents um, who had a, an interest in the kindergarten program since I became the superintendent in late October, and I, I I feel very confident in saying to you that any family that wishes to have their child enrolled in full day kindergarten for the fall will have a spot. What, what we have not yet identified is um, not, not every family will have the child attend in their, in their uh, district school. What district are you in? Little. Little school? Yeah. Right up north. I'm curious how you make the decision when you can talk about this. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's it seemed like Little, from what I knew, had 30, 30 children. Mm -hmm. only, only 19 made it, so 11 waitlisted. To me, it seems like... Yeah, it it do, it would look it does look like that. I can tell you, we we had an administrative council meeting just last Thursday, well Thursday before the vacation week, and the numbers continued to change. They don't change dramatically, but there has been a shift as recent as less than two weeks ago, and we're waiting just a little bit longer before we identify for those families that you don't yet know where their child is going to be going to identify where that will 
where that will be for September. And my my understanding is historically that this this happens as late as sometime around June first. Um, so I'm so hoping. So by June first, John. That yes, you know? I'm hoping it's sooner than that, and we're working to achieve that. But I, I can, I'm looking you in the eye and telling you that we are committed to, to accommodating every family that wants full day kindergarten for their child right. to have that. We're waiting on people that have said yes that you think might drop out. Uh, that's one factor. Yeah, that is one factor. Are the numbers, how many people are on the wait list? How many kids are on the wait list now? Do you know? Uh, I don't know that number. I know how many are registered. I don't know the yeah. wait list number off the top of my head. I'm sorry. Do you it's, know that, Mike? I mean, I, it's in that 11 student range in terms of wait listed for of having a full day kindergarten option at their home district, their home in district. their home district. But yeah, at some point it was about 19 kids were on the wait list between Willow and the two. Between the two, that's, about, the two, right. that's yeah, about right, two correct. Schools, so yeah. so we're, I think what Superintendent Bernard is saying and we're trying, is we're committed to offering enough full day kindergarten sections to accommodate every family and child that that right. wants one but it just it may the wait list is, is may not be in that home school district so that's what we're kind of waiting to to shake to shake out and to play out and to, to determine where that additional section that we're committed to offering is offered first. correct is offered okay. and so you know we actually we added a can a, a that's right correct to the budget yep. this year to accommodate the additional Hold kindergarten that. students no 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 it's not no and unfortunately we can't if we could add one to each school district, then we could assure that your child will go to your district. Um, you know, so it's a hassle for the parents for you because if your kids go to another district, but then they'll come back to your district. But we've, we found grade. a lot of parents are willing to do that as long as they can get enrolled. So, and it's a numbers game. That's what it comes down to. But if you haven't heard by June first, feel free to call Mr. Bernard. Yeah, you can. But I'm I'm very confident that you'll know before June first. But certainly, call me. You know, if you want to speak about it further and, and have additional questions that come up after you leave here tonight, you can do that. I'm I'm uh, I'm getting that sense. Yeah, yeah I am. This is. Yeah. This is the first year we've had several years in a row where we haven't been able to accommodate yeah. all the students, and we work with the administration. We had a, a bunch of parents. We've actually been here, working with the parents and the parents yeah. to yeah. get this resolved. Try to get it so at least everyone who wanted full day K could get it. And again, not guaranteeing at in your local, you know, your local Which district. Is really impossible. But we've had several parents in the past that couldn't, and they were frustrated. Um, the other thing we did was we we spread out the tuition payments, right, Michael? Correct. Yeah. We moved to a quarterly payment to make it a little bit easier for team. for budget planning and um, yeah. so forth. It's only eight percent interest. Huh? Uh, it's, it's, there are a couple of things. One, uh, one is space accommodation at that school. Um, the other is maximizing the number of students that are on a wait list at a particular school and trying to, to dovetail that so you're impacting a fewer amount of families. Is, you know what I'm saying? If there were an overwhelming number of families on a wait list at one school but there were, was a smaller number at another school, we may make the decision to put that section at the school where, the, where fewer families would be impacted. Yeah, what's, uh, what's about where we would that would ultimately factor into making the decision as to what school? No, I don't. No. What's the maximum number per class, John? Per kindergarten class? We we're try? we're we're liking like around 22. No. 22. Yeah. Is the more than 22. We're hoping to yeah. keep it at that, and we feel like we can. Yeah. Do, do the, all the different schools have different amounts of kindergarten classrooms? Yes. So what's the Correct. The the bachelor has four. Is going to go to four. Well, Right now, I think two the, the and one, I think, at the little, right? Right. Well, right now, the bachelor actually has three. The oh. hood at the moment has one, and the the little has one. So the bachelor has enough enrollment to accommodate three sections. The no, hood, I'm actually talking about physical space. Physical space, three classrooms. Right. And, and at the bachelor school, the, no. the little and the hood currently only have one, but then they have the students that are yes. on that are wait listed. So they we could move to two at. Uh, Although the hood currently has two, I think the hood has two. We currently yeah. have two, it's and but two looking long at long. the enrollment for next year, you know we, where that additional section would would go is what we're trying to figure out. Correct. And, and we would have the, to answer your question. We'd have the space. I mean, the bachelor space was designed for kindergarten. I mean, mm -hmm. those, those three classrooms of right. the bachelor designed for kindergarten. So, um, but I don't think space would be the issue. It's just trying to balance. Which 
Well, the minimum, I think we've gone down to 14, 14 or, or so. Yeah, no, yeah it's been low of that. To, yeah. And then do you spread them out more if that happens? Um, they, the, the principals have worked hard to, to achieve that balance. They, they real, realize that, that creating an inequity is not a good thing. I mean, we've had, the, at the little school, for example, some of the parents over there have had to face criticism over the years, not that it's their fault, because it had the smallest class sizes, because it was a, a shrinking school. But now it's kind of gotten to a situation where I think we have like two classes per grade, and, and so it's, 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 up, it's come up to almost equal with some of the other schools. But over the years, the little has had the smallest uh, number of students per class for a number of years, right. and the batch has been high. It's coming down mm -hmm. a little bit now. Right. It, it, as, as they said, it, it kind of changes on an annual basis. We just, we just don't know. I'm finding that a lot of parents are having issues because they already have a child in the little school well, and their child's waitlist. That, so that's another issue. It but is. Again, it is. it's a numbers yeah. game. I mean, it really it's is. Been, that's been a challenge, and, too. And I'm not sure if you're giving priority to the kids that have siblings already in that mm. school. I mean, but it's, you know. It's all, it's all, yeah. it's all factored in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I understand. Yeah. I can tell you that that has been a factor considered in the past, and I, I, I think it's a sensible one. To the, to, the ability, to the best of our ability, it makes sense to do that so that people aren't against the challenge that you just said, where one of our schools is a late school tr uh, traditionally. That could really complicate things for, for parents. Correct. That's correct. Yes. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's correct. I mean, the bus, get, the bus routes just right. wouldn't accommodate, wouldn't accommodate it. Right. Yeah. So if, you, if either of you folks were, either family was concerned about the availability of the, of the spot, that, you know, I'm hoping we've put that concern aside, but the district, where the child will go to school is, is still at issue and we're hoping to work through that in the next few weeks. And so will there be details about where that will be that, uh, that will be communicated to the families by the principal of the school. I, I didn't hear the first part of what you said. Uh, will, we, will we be able to attend the meetings where it's decided where the class will be held, the extra class? There is no, there is no meeting. No, once the decision is made among the administrators, the principals then communicate out to those families that are affected. Okay. Right. That's correct. 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 We, now, we, we committed yep. quite a while ago, yeah, really, that, probably, that yeah. every family that wanted full-day kindergarten for their child would have a spot. What we haven't been able to commit to is if it would be in the district, in the school, and where the, in the district where the family lives. And, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not sure who you're communicating with, but it's been, as Mr. Bernard said, we yeah, made up our mind quite a while ago that we were going to accommodate everybody that wanted a full-day kindergarten. Yeah, well, I, 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 would say, I would say that the hesitation may have come through a budget not being adopted right. yet. Yes. If, if somebody, yeah. And somebody may have wanted to communicate out that there is a, you know, the 1% or one-tenth of 1% the chance because the school committee hadn't yet adopted a budget number, but the commitment to doing that what has been there for quite some time now and is here it is here tonight okay all right thank you yes good 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 yes. um thank you we're still looking for a motion on the budget i will and, uh, make a motion i i took a pass at a motion up on the screen if you yeah it's right here mel on the i added a sentence yeah. that yeah. i don't know if that accomplishes what you what you're looking to do if not let me know all right, I move that the school committee approve and hereby adopt the final fiscal year That's 16 good. operating budget of 27 million. I don't know if I no, would say final. final. I don't want to say final either. Okay. Take, take the word final out, yeah. I would say I, I move the school committee approve and hereby adopt the fiscal year 16 operating budget of $27,478,662. Mm -hmm. This represents an increase of 2.7% or $714,647 over the fiscal year 15 appropriation of $26,764,015. This budget includes $407,564 of unidentified reductions. Um, instead of that have yet to be identified, that will be identified 
prior to town meeting? Um, if What's necessary. That? Yeah. No, I don't even know if you need that last part. I'm okay. going to be honest with you. Hold on a second. Um, I'm not sure. You know, right, I don't think we need that last sentence. I think just unidentified reductions is yeah. enough. I mean, just unless somebody else. Put a else period after a reduction. Yeah. Like unidentified reductions, yeah. yeah. I think that's enough. Okay. Are you looking for a second here? I am looking for a second. I'm a second. All right. We have a motion by Mr. Webster and a second by Mr. Bowers. And I want to reiterate what Julie had pointed out earlier. We are voting for a balanced budget, okay? We are voting the $27,478,662. So we have a motion. We have a second. Is there any further discussion? I just want to reiterate that um, I have no intention of asking for more money uh, at town meeting either. Um, I'm, if, money, if money comes our way in the next four to five weeks, we'll gladly accept it, but I'm not going to ask for more money if no money comes our way. This will be the budget that I support at town meeting. Agreed. Un okay. Unfortunately, but right. the budget is. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, none. Motion carries by a vote of four to nothing. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is our update, uh, the uh, Secondary School Building Committee update, and I'm gonna ask Mr. Bernard to give a report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just by way of uh, segueing into the report, just a reminder that um, there is a tour for the Secondary School Building Committee scheduled for uh, 4.30 tomorrow. So if, um, if you'd like to join us, I'm sure we can find you a hard hat. Um, we'll convene in the uh, Main Street um, area right outside the administrative office. This will be for the middle school, right? It'll be for the tour of the new middle school, correct. So uh, just for, uh, by way of an update, some bullet points for you. Um, E-building, the second story now has approximately 50% of the doors hung on both the first and second stories, and some floor work uh, preparation has begun for the installation of the floor tile, the VCT tile. Um, also in E-building, second story is nearly completed in painting, um, including the unfinished ceilings above the art rooms. These ceilings had been uh, exposed. And a significant amount, approximately 75% of casework has been installed as well. Uh, storefronts at the guidance and nurses areas are in. The glazing of the glass installation will follow. The exterior curtain wall with the glazing has been installed on the northeast side of the E and F building uh, connector and partially on the south side for the future middle school entrance. Site work continues on the west side of the high school where 75% of the granite curbing has been installed. It looks significantly different outside uh, just about on a daily basis. And Building F is 75% wallboard and taped and approximately 40% of that area has been primed and or painted. So things are progressing very well. Um, I have a feeling um, for those particularly who haven't been into the, the middle school site for quite some time, you're going to, to be um, pleased with the, with the amount of progress that has been uh, taking place. Any questions or comments from the committee? Um, not, uh, nothing other than that the, the place is an anthill. There are yeah. different different trades working in every direction. Um, it's uh, it, it's a little bit uh, strange to see the, the finished uh, casework and countertops and when there's no windows, right? And the paint <laughs> is going on and there's no window. Well, no finished door. Um, but they, they're moving at, at breakneck speed. It's uh, really uh, seeing uh, uh, plumbing fixtures in the, in the, yes. the two-story part. Uh, Even in the other. It's really, uh, really taking shape. And those uh, sixth grade laboratories are awesome. <coughs> uh, they have the casework in place. And really coming along. I mean, the seventh and eighth grade laboratories are unbelievable because they're, oh, they're yes. adjacent to right. and they abut that open space that right. you see the, the elevated uh, ceiling there. And that's really quite a space. And uh, the rendering we had of that collaborative space yeah. uh, doesn't do it justice. I was no. saying, don't, you know, a lot of people think this is a renovation. When you see this building when it's open, it's really a new school. Oh. <laughs> I mean, we kept the walls, basically. Kind of. But even the walls are covered. Right. We kept the walls, but even they're covered the over. It's a new school. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, for those people who haven't been unaware of that, I mean, it's not, we didn't go in there, you know, paint the walls. <laughs> there we are. Put up new ceiling. There's tunnels. nothing recognizable. It's a brand new, no. it's a brand new building. Yeah, right. It's a brand new building. And it's, uh, it's, it's really coming along. As Cliff said, uh, I, I was in there Saturday. And uh, it's amazing how much work they do from one week to the next. Once you get the roof on, once you get the HVAC in and the utilities in, they just, they're, they're flying in there. It's not so uh, amazing. If you through there while the contractors are working, 
because you understand how all of that happens so fast. So many people working on it. The other thing is that you can really see now how the outside is taking yeah. shape. Uh, if, you, if you go up into the back parking lot up by the gymnasium here, you can see how the, uh, the granite curbing is in place around the uh, central administration area. Uh, it's in place um, all up and down the back of the building. And then if you go up in the front off of Sherman yeah. Road, you can really see where the plaza is going to be. Nice finished look. You can see granite. where the road's going to be. Mm -hmm. It's all beautiful granite curbing. Yeah. And in the last couple of days, um, they have cleared and they've begun serious um, um, work on the tennis courts. Uh, if you go back to the far corner where the construction trailers were, uh, they've graded that, they've, they've taken all that dirt, they've leveled it off, they've filled it with stone dust, and they're well on their way to doing the site work for the tennis courts. So it's, it's really moving along. Uh, but there's still a lot of work to do. There is. And in addition to the tour tomorrow at 4.30, there will be a, a secondary school building committee meeting in this room at 5.30 p.m. tomorrow. Right. Okay. Anything further? All right. Next uh, policy manual review, we have a second reading on domestic violence uh, leave policy. Um, the policy number is GR, I'm sorry, GBRIH. Um, it previously, uh, there was previously a, uh, a first reading. Uh, does anyone want to, that was on April 13th. Uh, anyone want to make a motion or any comments on the policy itself? Move to approve. Second reading, policy GBRIH. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Webster and a second by uh, Mr. Bowers. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, none. Motion carries by a vote of four to nothing. Next on the agenda is the 2014-2015 uh, school committee self-evaluation, which we started several, three years ago, I think. I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Webster. He's been working on the uh, self-evaluation. So if uh, Gene and I, as part of the evaluation subcommittee, met with Mr. Bernard um, about two and a half weeks ago, and we've set a schedule uh, for the self-evaluation, which I think has been a successful um, project for us over the years. Uh, we, it's actually helped us to improve in some areas, focus on areas where we need improvement, and uh, look at areas that maybe we shouldn't be spending so much time on. And I've collected the results tonight. I will uh, summarize them, add up the scores, uh, submit them to Mr. Bernard, and he will provide us with a three-year um, report that will look back over the last two years so we can see how we've been, uh, how we're performing over the last three years. And again, the self-evaluation, I think this is the third year, Mel, we've been doing it's it? Fourth. Fourth year. Fourth. And it takes into consideration the four areas that we establish our goals on. The, right. It's uh, based on governance, right. uh, finance, uh, communication, uh, and um, I don't know what the other one is. Uh, the, uh, the one that we don't do so good. Do so good <laughs> leadership and government. Lead leadership and governance. <laughs> educational program. Educational family, that's the one. That's Education. Family and community <laughs> relations and financial and asset management. So, so I will take these. I will uh, get the information to John, and we will have a report at the May 11th. May 11th, right? Right at the Hood School. And we're meeting at uh, we're meeting on uh, May the 4th as an evaluation subcommittee. But the, the school committee will present the results at that right. meeting on May 11th. Right. Correct. Okay. Now, so self evaluation. We're supposed to do the whole committee, not just yourself. Right. right. Okay, well, I, gave myself, yourself. I gave myself very high well, marks. But I, I assume you would. The rest of us, you're not as generous with, <laughs> right? Any other comments on the self-evaluation? Yeah. All right, next on the agenda, we have the 2015-16 uh, lunch prices. Uh, Mr. Conley is going to give us an update on some potential changes. Great, thank you. So uh, tonight in your school committee packet, there was a recommendation that would propose to increase school lunch prices at the elementary and middle school level. Um, this would be for the first time in several years. Uh, this is necessary uh, at this time next school year in order to comply with new USDA and, and DS, DSE re regulations. Uh, the provision requires all school food authorities participating in the National School Lunch Program to ensure that paid lunches are sufficient to cover the cost of paid meals or otherwise provide funds to support paid mail costs. To, so to adhere to the, the new regulations, we will need to increase the price of student lunches to bring them closer to what is a weighted average of 270. So the DESC has 
published a required minimum of, of a weighted average of lunch prices, which is going up from what was two dollars and sixty five cents this year up to two seventy. So if we make no change based on the calculation and the guidance from the Department of Education, we would have a weighted average price next year that would be under the minimum of two dollars and seventy cents. It would be at two sixty eight. So we've, I have met with Chartwell's officials. They've certainly been a part of this recommendation. We have reviewed um, kind of operationally uh, what would make sense next school year. Uh, there was also some benchmark data um, from area surrounding communities that was included in your packet as well. Uh, most communities um, to adhere to these new regulations and these provisions of the, of the of the, basically of the law will need to increase their lunch prices next year as well. So most of the, the pricing that was included in the benchmark data, I think many of those communities that I was able to contact have indicated that they would be looking to make a potential increase next school year as well. So the proposed and recommended changes for next school year would be to increase the current lunch price by an increment of 25 cents at the elementary and middle school level. Currently, the lunch price for all elementary students is $2.50. For middle school students, it is $2.75. And for the high school students, it is $3. The recommended increase would make the elementary student lunch price $2.75 and the price for the combined middle school high school $3. This would raise North Reading's average weighted price calculation, certainly above the required minimum amount of $2.70. Uh, after reviewing the recommendation with Chartwell's management team and doing some uh, projections into next school year as we prepare um, to project and to budget for the 2015 school year, we actually felt this increase could result in an additional net profit of, of $13,000 to $14,000. Again, I think despite the recommended increase, I do feel based on the benchmark data that was provided that we will still remain very close to the sort of the average lunch prices that were included in the packet of the surrounding communities, which we are anticipating will increase next school year to, to apply with these new provisions. Uh, we also need to think about our gross profit margin a little bit as we look at operationally how to get to our ultimate goal, which is to run a break-even program. And I will say that our current operational costs as a percent of our annual gross revenue ratios are currently above optimum levels. And I do feel this, this it has a potential to, to help that ratio um, out as well. So this action does require a vote of the committee. There is a recommended motion uh, included uh, in the memo that was provided. And I will um, you know, open it up to any discussion at this time. Comments from the uh, comments or questions from the school committee? Question. Do you, do you know when the last time was we raised lunch prices? Um, I believe it's been about four fiscal year. I think 2010 okay. was the last. It's been it's been three, five, four fiscal years. Yeah, my kids were still in elementary school. So. Yeah. The other thing is you mentioned uh, will be a 14,000 net increase in profit. I, we haven't had a profit on the lunch program for. So no, we're trying to you know, cut, cut into the deficit, right? Correct. So, yeah. as part of the amendment of the contract with Charles that we're working on, we actually ran the numbers and we felt that their projected net loss, should it, lunch prices remain the same, would be in the thirty-three, thirty-four thousand dollar amount. By implementing an increase and adjusting the projections and participation accordingly, based on some assumptions. Uh, they would be comfortable putting in an amendment a projected net loss of about more closer to twenty thousand dollars. Looking at the comparative districts you gave us, it puts us in the ballpark. I mean, yeah. yeah, we're probably a little <laughs> on the high side. But these are going to be raising, right? Because they're they going to be raising, yeah. correct? So yeah. we're, I think we're we're right there. Um, and we have to do this, or we'll we'll receive. We some do sort have of, to do we'll this. Have to, we'll have to um, then raise some money anyway. We'll have to support the program otherwise, right? If we don't raise the lunch prices we as a district will probably have to come up with some money to subsidize the lunch program, is that? So what they're saying is we're, they're required to meet this minimum of, you know, threshold of average weighted price between the, the three levels um, at, each, at each level. And there's a calculation that you're, you go through. So if, if, you know, we, the program is reviewed every, every three years, we're up for a program review in the near future. If, 
if we don't raise it and we fall below that threshold, we risk losing the federal and state reimbursement dollars okay. that we're receiving right. as as participation in that in the food service program, so USDA really, program. Really don't have a choice here. So we do need to increase it. I, I will say this recommended increase would put us at a weighted average around two dollars and you know seventy eight cents, um, which is above the two seventy. But I think there's very likelihood every couple of years you could see that going up by five cents increment. So this would stabilize the pricing for a period of time and, and put us above that threshold. Okay, any further discussion? Obviously we can't sell meals for cheaper to the kids who aren't in the program uh, that the feds are paying than the feds pay, right? The feds have to pay the cheapest price. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as a result, we have to increase the number. Right. Mm -hmm. my, my business training says that as you increase the number, you will lose some candidates, right. uh, some, some sales. Correct. And uh, so we'll, we'll see if this actually turns out to be a profit. Well, that, that's, that's possible. I think increase. if you weigh a 25% increase against the convenience or inconvenience of, you know, uh, it may not make that big a difference. Yeah, we'll but, see. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it, I'm, my, my, actually, my comments are not publishable, uh, <laughs> not broadcastable anyway. <laughs> Yeah. And we'll talk to you after the we'll talk to you yeah. after the meeting then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, we need a motion. I make a motion to increase type A lunch prices by twenty five percent twenty five cents at the elementary and middle school level for the two thousand fifteen sixteen school year. This increase will make the elementary lunch price two seventy five and the middle school lunch price three dollars. Motion by Mr. Webster, second by Ms. Imbriano. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, none. No. Motion. Oops, sorry. We have three in favor, one against, three to one. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda, and we do this every year, it's required that it be done before June 1st. Uh, it's the question of school choice. And under the Education Reform Act of 1993, <clears throat> you need to hold a public hearing on school choice annually. Uh, becoming a, a choice district means that North Reading will accept students from other cities and towns for enrollment in its schools. Once a student is accepted as a choice student, he or she is a student until graduation or the student opts to withdraw. And the district receives an additional $5,000 from the sending district's Chapter 70 funds for each student accepted. So at this time, I'm gonna open the public hearing uh, regarding school choice. If there's anybody that would like to be heard, um, just raise your hand, you'll be identified and you can be heard. You know, I don't think it precludes right. our students from going. Go ahead, Michael. Do you it, have an it, answer for that, John? Yeah, they, no, that. Is it a reciprocal situation where, you know, if he chooses to. Can you speak for the microphone, please? I'm sorry. Oh, oh he's no. on. <laughs> oh, the, 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 yeah, so our, our students uh, are always eligible, um, if they should desire, to opt to enter into a receiving district that has voted to be a school choice district. So I don't think it's a quid pro quo. Right. I think that so it's correct. not a quid pro quo. We just. We're willing right, to accept yeah. in. Right. And I think one of the issues always has been, and I'm going to ask to change the way we word the motion because I've never understood It's been like this. that for right. 127 years, that motion. And, and I, I don't know if we should be changing it, but go ahead. One of the issues is, is, is um, you get $5,000, and right. if you get too many students coming in and not enough going out, you end up with a net loss and you end up having to raise the budget more to support those students coming into your district. Because it costs right. a lot more than $5,000 to each pupil. Right. Now, if you only get a few coming in and you can fit them into existing without spaces increasing without overhead. increasing overhead, and yeah. mm -hmm. right. it can work, but there's, you know. I think it's a little risky, but yeah. I know in the past we've consistently voted to uh, um, not to have school choice. The That's difficulty the is you own them for the rest of right. their yeah. career in no, school. Too. Correct. Yeah. So anything, anything further from the public regarding the school choice? Okay, we'll close the public part of the hearing and then we'll ask if there's any further discussion or comments from the school committee. Okay, then would I ask for a motion? I will make a motion to not participate in school choice because the program as it is pre presently constructed does not ensure that the needs of all of the children of the Commonwealth <laughs> can be met. I think it serves the same purpose. Right, but that's. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Do you understand what he's done? He's just changed okay. it. I made it. It's a grammatical. Change it from a, a negative yeah. to well, a positive. Line. Yeah. Second. I hope this doesn't mean we're going to have like two, three hundred students applying here next year, Mel, because. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, both no, I, I <laughs> said. I, my, I know, my I motion see. was to not. <laughs> Appro not not approve yeah. to participate in yeah. as a school choice district. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Webster. Do we have a second? Yeah, I'll second. I second. Okay, Janine we have a second. Oh, Janine second. Yes. We have a second by Ms. Embriano. Yeah. <laughs> Any further discussion regarding this matter? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, none. Motion carries by a vote of four to nothing. Just out of pure curiosity, have the school system ever been um, contacted by someone who was hoping to come in you know what I'm saying even though we don't and have we had to turn them away because we don't participate I can yeah I can tell you Ms. Imbriano that when I was the high school principal I would get a call once in a while asking if we were a choice district I know we've had kids leave here and go to other districts yeah yeah, I, mean, I remember a couple of kids uh, that went yeah, to ask yeah. we have two, yeah, yeah. Currently. two currently two currently yeah yeah, yeah. So it does happen. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. All right, next to the agenda, we have no minutes to sign at this meeting. We have. Would, would be in our favor, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would, Potential. actually. Yeah. It would. For sure. Yeah. Um, we have no minutes to, uh, to approve. We have no budget update uh, on the current fiscal year. We have no staffing changes, and we have no bids and donations to accept. Um, we have some subcommittee reports. And uh, I think we've already covered the secondary school building committee, unless if you had anything further to no, add. I don't have to okay. Uh, finance planning team met on April 17th, and I believe uh, uh, John, Michael, Cliff, and uh, Janine were all there. Anything to report from the financial planning team meeting? The, uh, the health insurance costs are actually staying the same. So as a result, that uh, resulted in uh, um, an advantage. The uh, cost of vocational education, Northeast Regional and Essex Technical, uh, went up very substantially, uh, something in our budget of about $74,000 hit. Uh, that was a big, uh, a big cost. So that countered a, a lot of the advantage from the health program. Um, and uh, other than that, I think that's pretty much the the uh, things that came out of the program that we should be anything talking. further um just that it was mentioned that the schools went up on their fees without prior um knowledge you know like normally they'd have discussion back and forth saying we're thinking about raising the tuition oh, price. You mean and they just kind of blindsided if i remember you're talking about the vote yeah. yes the vote yeah yes. mm -hmm. Yeah, that came as a surprise. Actually, what, yeah. what happened is there was a projected 4.9% increase in the health insurance costs for the, for the health insurance for the town and for the participants. And um, currently, the, the uh, health insurance is with Harvard Pilgrim. Blue Cross came in and basically made a proposal to come in and keep it at zero so that there would be no increase. Uh, that realized a savings of in excess of, I think, $200,000 to the town. Uh, and then I think um, Harvard Pilgrim came back in and they're trying to, they're gonna pretty much I think match that match so that. the program will stay the same but with a zero percent increase. But this is kind of a dynamic I think that's still still in the works a little bit. And unfortunately the Northeast Vokes assessment kind of offset the savings that well, we're gonna probably. realize from the health insurance. So, John, do you wanna add anything? I was just gonna add, Mr. Chairman, that I attended a meeting, uh, Michael and I both attended a meeting on uh, April the 16th where the representative of Harvard um, Insurance and, and Michael Gilberto, the town administrator, made a, made a presentation um, to the Insurance Advisory Committee, and I think it's fair to say that they were very confident that Harvard that the yes that that plan would stay, and that, yeah. that that's a, a very you with, know with no positive interest. benefit. Correct. Yeah, yeah. very positive. And that, that's you know reassuring, I think, to the participants because yeah, right. they hate to change plans, so they can keep the change plan change, correct. The doctors change yeah. everything. And Okay. And the only other thing, Mr. Chairman, I would add is in your schedule of subcommittee meetings, the finance planning team meeting may change to 815 on Thursday, Thursday. April the 30th. And I just checked my email as you were speaking to see if they had gotten uh, sent out a confirmation. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but I'll let you all know if that okay. does happen. Um, North Cam Board of Directors met um, at Ask Mel or, or Cliff. Do you have any report on that? I was not there. I, di I didn't attend it. I, okay. do, I do know that um, 
they discussed uh, the new cameras, which are operating now in here, except for the live broadcast. is still working out some kinks. However, the recorded meeting will be shown using the new equipment, which is the four cameras, two up front, two in the back. And actually, Phil Healy is working the, uh, the control the in the board. back room there, and the board as we speak. <laughs> and it uh, looks pretty professional back there. It does. There. <laughs> That's, that's good. So uh, hopefully, they'll be able to they'll get their consultant in here, and they're going to work on uh, making sure they get the ability to broadcast live from here. All right. Well, thank you to Nokia. Yes. Uh, subcommittee schedule. We have an athletic subcommittee meeting tomorrow, uh, Tuesday at 12.30. Secondary School Building Committee, as we already stated, is tomorrow at 5.30. And that's in this room. Finance planning team is going to meet, I think it's going to be 8.15 on Thursday morning at Town Hall. The evaluation subcommittee is going to meet on May 7th at 3 p.m. Policy subcommittee on May 18th, 2015 at 3 p.m. <laughs> If John's trying to trick me. I know. That's 2016. He does that once I gave him, meeting. Meeting. I gave him a heads up yeah. earlier. <laughs> uh, Knock him. Uh, board of Directors is going to meet on May 25th, 2015. May 28th. Uh, 28th at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, at this time, there's no correspondence, uh, but I think there's an administrative report. John? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I, I do have a few things I just wanted to call to your attention. Um, Today, uh, Michael and I traveled to Taunton, Taunton High School, um, for a Chapter 70 and Net School Spending Workshop. I just wanted to, to let you know um, that we had gone, and it was an informational session. Michael has been uh, in the past. Um, it was a good experience for me to, to, to just learn a little bit more about the funding formula, and uh, which is, you know, as I think we all know, is extremely complicated. But um, the factors that go into um, the appropriation to, to our town and I think it's fair to say there were probably maybe 10 or 12 districts represented, sure, would you say, yeah. Michael, from all over, from Avon to Gardner to, to North Reading. And um, I think it was, uh, it, was, it was clear to me that the work that we do um, as a district and largely the work that Michael does in his budget preparation is very good. And, and I, think, you know, I think some folks walked out of the, 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 the seminar today um, having picked up some very good ideas, some of which you know, Michael is instituting here. So I just thought it was important for you to know that we had attended. Um, the North Reading dollars, of scholars, dollars for Scholars, which I, I know you're all aware is a, a huge um, benefactor to, um, to the town and contributing scholarship money to, to graduating seniors who attend North Reading High School and other, um, and other high schools and also postgraduate scholarships. They're holding a fundraiser on Monday um, at the Horseshoe Grill. It's uh, May 4th. It's the Cinco de Mayo. This has become an annual event. Shouldn't that even, be the even, de Mayo? Even, even though they're holding it on a Monday yeah. the 4th, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I know Pat Lee has caught uh, a lot of uh, razzing about yeah. that, but um, that's if, if you're interested, it's 5 o'clock till uh, 9 p.m. On, on Monday, May the 4th. Just a reminder to you all that um, next Tuesday, um, a representative from the Mass School Building Authority will be at the EF Little School for a tour um, of that facility um, in response to the statement of interest that was filed um, in February seeking um, financial assistance with the restoration of the school's roof. So if you're able to attend, I, certainly your presence would be welcome and appreciated. Do we have a time on that yet? 2.30. 2.30. Yes. Uh, next week is Teacher Appreciation Week, and in that week, uh, Teacher Appreciation Day is always designated as uh, the Tuesday of the week. So I, I just I would ask the committee to join me in um, in congratulating and thanking all of our educators um, for um, the work that they do on behalf of all of our students on this year's Teacher Appreciation Day, which is Tuesday, May the fifth. And lastly, I wanted to call to your attention an informational presentation that the district is holding uh, next Wednesday, May the 6th, at 6.30 in our Performing Arts Center. This is um, ensuring a safe and supportive learning environment for all students. We have uh, Mr. Jeff Parati, who works uh, with the Department of Education. He's worked with our, our staff um, over the last few years in helping um, to promote a safe learning environment for all students, particularly those who are identifying under um, LGBTQ um, related matters. And um, I'm encouraging um, our administrative staff to attend and it's open to the community. And certainly if you are available, you're all welcome to attend as well. Again, that's 6.30 next Wednesday, May the 6th. And that's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Bernard. Uh, okay, future business. Uh, John already mentioned the uh, MSBA site visit to Little School. Our next meeting is May 11th at 7 p.m. That's going to be at the, the, uh, the Hood School, and that will be our REOG meeting for the school committee. Uh, and then on May 26th is a meeting at 7 o'clock. That's a Tuesday because of the holiday. That's right. a regular meeting uh, right here at the, long, at the distance learning lab. 
So I don't know if there's anything else. Anything further from anybody? I just have one question for Michael. Um, you had uh, presented a preliminary, um, I think you presented a preliminary facilities rental. Yes. Are we going to be seeing a tomorrow. final? Oh, so, yes. Tomorrow, um, oh, oh, the Lieutenant Bernard and I will be presenting a recommendation. Okay. So then we will bring it from there to the By the May 11th. Okay. Meeting, yeah. All right. Okay. Thanks. All right. Well, motion to adjourn is uh, if this was my last meeting, I want to say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'll be back on May 11th or not, but uh, other than that, I'd ask for motion to adjourn. No move. Motion by Cliff, second by Janine. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Carries by vote of one another.